Then she went into a lonely forbidden chamber where no one was allowed to come and poisoned a beautiful apple. Outwardly it looked ripe and tempting of a pale green with rosy cheeks so that it made everyone's mouth water to look at it. But whoever eat even a small piece must die. As soon as this apple was ready, the wicked queen painted her face, disguised her hair, dressed herself as a farmer's wife and went again over the mountains to the dwarf's cottage. When she knocked at the door, Snow White stretched her head out of the window and said, I dare not let you in. The seven dwarfs have forbidden me. But I'm all right, said the farmer's wife. Stay, I will show you my apples. Are they not beautiful? Let me make you a present of one. No, thank you, cried Snow White. I dare not take it. What, cried the woman, are you afraid it's poisoned? Look here now, I will cut the apple in halves. You shall have the rosy cheek side and I will eat the other. The apple was so cleverly made that the red side alone was poisonous. Snow White longed so much for the beautiful fruit as she saw the farmer's wife eat one half that she could not any longer resist, but stretched out her hand from the window and took the poisoned half. But no sooner had she taken one mouthful than she fell on the ground, dead. Then the wicked queen glanced in at the window with a horrible look in her eye and laughed aloud as she exclaimed, White as snow, red as blood and black as ebony. This time the dwarfs will not be able to awake thee. And as soon as she arrived home and asked her mirror who was the most beautiful in the land, it replied, Fair queen, there is none in all the land so beautiful as you. Then had her envious heart rest, at least such rest as a heart full of envy and malice can ever have. The little dwarfs, when they came home in the evening, found poor Snow White on the ground. But though they lifted her up, there were no signs of breath from her mouth, and they found that she was really dead. Yet they tried in every way to restore her. They tried to extract the poison from her lips. They combed her hair and washed it with wine and water, but all to no purpose. The dear child gave no signs of life, and at last they knew she was dead. Then they laid her on a bier, and the seven dwarfs seated themselves around her and wept and mourned for three days. They would have buried her then, but there was no change in her appearance. Her face was as fresh, and her cheeks and lips had their usual colour. Then said one, We cannot lay this beautiful child in the dark, cold earth. So they agreed to have a coffin made entirely of glass, transparent all over, that they might watch for any signs of decay. And they wrote in letters of gold her name on the lid, and that she was the daughter of a king. The coffin was placed on the side of the mountain and each of them watched it in turns, so it was never left alone. And the birds of the air came near and mourned for Snow White. First the owl, then the raven, and at last the dove. Snow White lay for a long, long time in the glass coffin, but showed not the least signs of decay. It seemed as if she slept, for her skin was snow white, her cheeks rosy red, and her hair black as ebony. It happened one day that the son of a king, while riding in the forest, came by chance upon the dwarf's house and asked for a night's lodging. As he left the next morning, he saw the coffin on the mountainside, with beautiful snow white lying in it, and he read what was written upon the lid in letters of gold. Then he said to the dwarfs, let me have this coffin, and I will give you for it whatever you ask. But the elder dwarf answered, We would not give it to thee for all the gold in the world.